What is up, everybody? Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Rocket Vlogs. Um, I was asked to do a video on grain bonding. Um, I've done it a couple times in the past, but didn't really make a video dedicated specifically on this procedure. And what we're talking about in this video is motors that need the grains bonded into the liner, not motors that need the grains glued to each other like the N1000, the M650, the M685. I will, however, be doing a video on that in the near future as I have an N1000 that needs to be assembled. Now, today I'm using a Cesaroni motor and the procedure is going to be pretty much the same with an Aerotech motor, uh, but I'm going to highlight where there are differences. But I figured this would be a good one to start with because it kind of highlights attention to detail. This is a pink motor, as you can probably tell from these bright pink stickers, the CTI M1675. However, it's not pink propellant. It has one red grain and four blue ones. So you have to make sure that the red grain goes on the bottom. This is a good one for this video because we got to pay special attention to make sure we're getting that grain in last. But before we start this, I wanted to just talk about the things you're going to want to have handy for when you're doing this. Obviously, for one, you're going to want rubber gloves because you're about to get glue everywhere. Two, you're going to want to get glue. And this is a very hotly debated topic for some reason. This is Elmer's Glue All Max, which is specifically cited in Aerotech's instructions for grain bonding. However, it is really hard to get. Most hardware stores don't just stock it. I ordered this from Amazon for when we flew the Punisher. However, many, many people, myself included, use Gorilla Glue most of the time. I have flown a ton of grain bonded motors that I glued using Gorilla Glue. And for every one that I've flown, Taylor has flown like 10. Never had a problem. A lot of people like to talk about how there's potential for it to foam, but I'll uh, give you guys a little hint as to what I just pulled off the bottle there. That's foam and this is glue all max. I don't know the exact makeup of each glue, but they smell and look exactly the same. And uh, my N2220 was glued with Gorilla Glue, my M2050s. Pretty much every motor up until last year, or the year before, I guess, was glued with just Gorilla Glue. And Carl from Aerotech even said using Glue All Max or Gorilla Glue when they did the video outlining how to assemble the O5280 or O5500 at the time. So it's a wash. If you don't have access to Elmer's Glue All Max, use regular Gorilla Glue. It's fine. This foams, Gorilla Glue foams, they're both low foaming. It's, you know, it is what it is. It works fine. A lot of people like to say that the foam of Gorilla Glue will crack the liner. Um, I'm sure it's happened to somebody at some point, but never to me. And I don't know why the Gorilla Glue foam would do it, but this foam from the Glue All Max wouldn't. So, uh, you know, just try to keep moisture out of the equation. And uh, yeah, so from there, I'm just going to talk about how we're going to proceed with putting this motor together. And the first thing we're going to do is take our liner out of the bag and we're gonna clean the inside of the liner. A key element here, with the CTI motors versus the Aerotech ones, CTI motors do not use the aluminum forward seal disc. A lot of people that cross load them in Aerotech cases like I'm about to do will use the Aerotech forward seal disc instead of this big fiber washer that comes with the CTI ones. Last time I flew this motor, I cross loaded in an Aerotech case, I used the CTI fiber washer, everything was fine. That's actually what the instructions say to do as well. All right, so the first step here is we're gonna get a big bundle of paper towels going. And just kind of stuff them loosely in the liner. And then a big dowel is your friend for this process. But I like to kind of just push it straight through and assess how dirty it is, which you can see right there, pretty dirty. So then I like to try and fold the paper towel around so we don't have the same dirty pieces of paper towel touching the walls because that seems a little self-defeating and we're just trying to get a relatively clean outcome here and then I'll kind of rip it and make it a little bit smaller tuck it into one side like this and then kind of use the dowel as a uh, cleaning ramrod of sorts. Again, I keep folding the paper towel, just trying to get as much clean paper towel surface as I can on the liner. Inserting it from the other side. Okay. 
And that's going to do it from there. Some people do like to use like denatured alcohol or rubbing alcohol to clean the inside of the liner. If you're going to do that, I would highly advise letting the liner sit for a long time before you start gluing stuff. Because like we just talked about, moisture will guarantee you get a lot of foam out of one of these glues. So you want to avoid that. Okay, next up on the docket, we're gonna take all of our propellant grains out. We have the appropriate amount of grains. That is great because this is a five grain motor and there's five grains right here. So what we're gonna do now, we're going to open each grain. Now, very, very important step, do not skip this. This is the tape side is our seal disc side or not seal disc, our washer. That's how I'm gonna keep it. So this is gonna be the nozzle side. Red grain goes at the bottom. First thing we're gonna do, test every single propellant grain and make sure it slides through the liner easily. Because I promise you, you do not want to start gluing a propellant grain and get it stuck halfway in the liner. That one's a little more snug, but it still gets the pass. Good. Good. Even though I'm confident that this motor does not have different size cores, I'm going to line them all up and make sure that every core is the same size. Some motors do have different size cores and you want to make sure that they are all correct. If you do have a motor with different size cores, there is a required orientation, so pay close attention to the instructions for the assembly. If you do run into a grain that doesn't fit through the liner, it's very snug, you can simply just grab one of these ends of cardboard like that. You probably can't see that very well. And just peel a layer of cardboard off the casting tube. It will be fine. If you have to run into a situation where you're gonna need to peel several layers of the casting tube though, you might wanna consider reaching out to the manufacturer but at this point, probably only if the manufacturer's Aerotech, because I don't know if you're gonna get an answer out of CTI. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is where the scary stuff starts. I promise it's not that scary. It is very intimidating if it's something that you haven't done before, but once you've done it a couple times, it becomes pretty second nature. Now, you're gonna notice that I load the grains only from one side. I don't really know why. Um, the CTI and Aerotech bonding instructions both say to load from the nozzle end. And I don't really have any explanation for that, but I'm not a propulsion engineer. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and listen to the people that are. Now remember, the red base grain goes on the bottom. And I already know that, okay? I know that, but what we're gonna do is look at the package one more time. Now, what I like to do is keep one hand clean for touching the glue bottle and the O-rings, and the other hand will be our glue application hand. I'm gonna move the camera so that you guys kind of get a better view of what's going on up close. I like to rip a piece of paper towel just to have it handy in case things get a little wet and wild. So what we're gonna do, get a healthy amount of glue on this grain. No, oh, maybe. All right, take two now that the glue bottle is actually letting glue come out. Get a healthy amount of glue on the grain. And then I'm gonna flip it over and just get a nice, healthy, but thin layer on the grain. And what I like to do is go, you know, maybe three quarters of the way down slide it in and you want to twist it while you're doing so so it's picking up all the extra glue and you'll notice that some starts to accumulate on the end there which is why i stop about three quarters of the way down the grain that looks like it's going to be enough but if it's not i will squirt a little bit more glue on the end of the grain spin it around there and now touching the grain face I'm going to use my clean hand. I'm going to push it in just far enough to get our O-ring in there. I'm going to wipe excess glue off the edge there. Take one of our grain spacer O-rings and I like to do it like this 
so that I can be sure when I put the next grain in, it's not going to bunch it up. You'll notice I'm trying my best not to touch the end of the grain with any glue on my hands. So again, we're going all from the nozzle end and the red one goes on the bottom. So the next step is another blue grain. Ooh, almost got some on the liner there. But if you do get some on the liner, don't freak out. Sorry about all the extra noise in the background. They're for some reason picking up the recycling super late today, which is a lot of fun for me. <laughs> Once we've got a good coat of glue on the majority of that grain, and you can, you don't have to do it my way. You can go glue all the way down if you want. You're gonna be handling it with your glue hand anyway. We've got our O-ring there, and I'm just gonna use this grain, gently line it up and push it in. And we're gonna get some twisting action going here, as usual. And then we're gonna use our clean hand, push it the rest of the way in. Now from there, you're just repeating the process. Get all the excess glue off. I think you guys get that. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do the rest while you watch and listen to some nice soothing music. Okay, all the glue is in, all the O-rings are in. My next step, take these gloves off, throw this paper towel away, and we have a little bit of cleanup to do, and one last step. I'm gonna take a paper towel dampened with alcohol and just kinda clean the outside of this liner up a little bit. Be careful not to get any alcohol inside the liner, obviously. I don't really know if rubbing alcohol would cause the glue to foam, but I don't really have any intentions of finding out either. Okay. Now, this is a step that uh, I see a lot of point of contention with, where you've just put, you've just put all of your propellant grains in through the nozzle end. So now, naturally, there's a bunch of glue on the nozzle end. However, you don't want to glue the nozzle in. I've been told it can cause pressure buildup inside the motor, and that is definitely not a thing that you want. If you pressurize the liner instead of the motor case, you can run into some big, big issues, big, loud, expensive issues, and we don't want any of those. Next step, put the nozzle in. Stand your motor up. Okay, at this point, if you were using an Aerotech motor, this would be when you want to put your seal disc in. Then you just got to find a nice safe place and let it stand up overnight. It's highly recommended that you do this whole procedure at least the night before you're going to fly the motor, but ideally give it 24 hours. I'm just going to clean up this liner with a little more rubbing alcohol. Like I said, in the case of this CTI motor, it's just this guy that sits on top here. So we're not gonna have any, uh, any O-ring. So no seal disc for me, but uh, I'm just gonna let this sit and dry. Some people do use the Aerotech seal disc, but from what I understand to get it to fit based on just looking at this, I don't know how close you can tell that is to the end of the liner. Uh, you would have to leave out one of the grain spacer O-rings to leave room for the seal disc to fit, at least in the case of this particular motor. So. That's not what I'm gonna do. Instead, I'm gonna fly it the way CTI designed it. Cause again, not a propulsion engineer. And there you have it. That really is as simple as it is. I know if you've never glued a 75 or 98 millimeter motor before, it does seem scary and intimidating, but that really is all there is to it. Just take your time. And if you have a grain that needs to be in a specific orientation of the motor, pay close attention to that. But other than that, is a pretty straightforward process. It's not that easy to mess up, but it is possible. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Braden Carlson. You just watched a Rocket Vlogs video. If this video helped you, please press the like button, leave a comment, tell me about your grain bonding experiences, any incidents you've had. This motor is going in my minimum diameter rocket that is gonna fly at Friends of Amateur Rocketry. It should go about Mach 2 and 20,000 feet fairly conservatively. So if you wanna check that flight out, be sure to hit the subscribe button. 
If this video helped you out and you want to help me out, you can join Patreon at patreon.com slash rocketvlogs or join the channel membership below. It's $2.99 a month for the channel membership or $1 a month on Patreon. I do a quarterly rocket giveaway and it is a new quarter. So at the end of this month, I'll be picking a winner from a caption contest on Patreon. You do have to be a $5 or more month Patreon supporter to enter the caption contest. But if you want to check it out again, that's patreon.com slash rocketvlogs. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can check out the Nigel the Rocket Cat merch and all the other merch I have available at rocketvlogs.com. And finally, if you can't give me money or don't feel like it, that's fine. I'm just glad you're here. You made it all the way to the end of the video. The best thing you can do for me is press that like button, leave a comment, and share this video with your friends. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you guys next time.